Hello, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us at the second annual Encouragement Sisterhood Conference. I am super excited. I am just so honored and humbled that God allowed us all to be here today. And those of you who cannot make it today, but will be receiving um, the VIP link um, for all the speakers from the conference, God bless you. And I pray that um, you have been blessed by all the speakers so far, that you will continue to be blessed with my, not just myself, but everyone else that is to come. This is an awesome movement that my sister in Christ, Jarkeisha, has put together. I am just so thankful for her and the vision that God has given her because what she is doing, especially not just with this um, encouragement sisterhood uh, conference, but she's had so many amazing things going on. And her CHOP movement is just like, it's just amazing. It's phenomenal. And with that brand, it allows us, a, a, it's like a constant reminder for us to remember to check on our people. And as we check on our people, then we're reminded, hey, I need to check in with myself to see where I am because we do not want to allow ourselves to get so far deep where we miss those signs and we miss those moments where uh, we could have gotten the help that we needed. Amen. So today I was asked to uh, share a, a testimony with you all and that's exactly what I am going to do. So without further ado, I'm going to tell you all more about myself. My name is Jessica Williams. I am the founder and president of Warrior Women in Christ, um, which is a movement that really supports women and their voices. I help women use their voices by sharing their stories um, through online and all of our outlets um, via media. I help women use their voices. We have a, a weekly, we actually have two days out of the week prayer calls where we're interceding for people where we're standing firm and we're learning and growing through Christ with one another, but also building each other up um, through prayer and standing on God's foundation, which is his word. Amen. So, and there's so many other things. I have a book coming and I have a podcast and all of the things. I am definitely a wife. I am a mother. I um, am a writer and I'm just excited to just encourage you guys today. I pray that today that my story and my journey will bless you guys um, uh, as it has blessed myself, especially going back to read my book, to read pieces of my testimony that I share. You know, when you remove yourself and come back to see something um, like that and to see like, listen, I remember where I was in this moment. I remember what was going on in my mind in this moment, something like that. Like, it's kind of like you're looking at yourself from new lenses, right? So for me, the testimony begins where um, it was 2019. I was pregnant with my youngest daughter. And at the time, um, I didn't think much of it. I kept having like these, like my, like these chest pains or uh, I found myself kind of just kind of staying to myself, um, not wanting to talk to people. And this was normal for me because, hey, I'm pregnant, you know, and I've been through this before. So it's normal for me to not really want to deal with too much and involve myself in certain things. But I noticed that this time it was a little bit more aggressive, if you will. And so what actually brought things to an alarm for me was one day I was sitting on my couch and uh, my phone rang. And just the, the, the view of this person's name gave me this feeling that clutched really tight in my chest where I couldn't breathe. And... I thought maybe it was just something I ate. I thought maybe it was just, I don't know, something weird going on that day. And so another person called and I had that same feeling. But only when these two particular people would call, I would get this feeling. And so it was bad enough where no matter where I was at, I would get this feeling whenever they would call me. So I contacted my doctor because I knew something was not right. And I thought maybe it was something to do with the baby because I don't ever remember feeling like this. I've never had this feeling before. And um, so I didn't quite understand how to explain it um, to my doctor, but I knew I needed to get checked out because I was concerned for my child. So uh, as I went into the doctor, 
uh, I told them my symptoms and they began to monitor me closely for a couple of weeks. And I had to mark down, keep a journal of what I ate, what I did, um, when those moments happened, if they happened, um, how I was able to calm myself down, if I was able to calm myself down. And um, they kind of suggested me to just kind of just be mindful of even my surrounding environments and my thoughts and all the things in that moment. And so I did. I kept a journal. I kept um, constant communication with my doctor. I answered all the questions that was needed. And I just couldn't pinpoint anything. When he asked, you know, has this ever happened? I told him, no, I don't remember. But it's something deep down inside of me. I just kind of felt like, um, like, I don't, like, it was something bigger. It was something different. Like, why am I all of a sudden having these um, issues, right? And so, eventually, uh, fast forward, eventually, it was confirmed that I was indeed having very active panic attacks. Um, it wasn't to the point where I needed medication, but I, I did have to actively recognize it. But because I was able to stop myself and just take deep breaths, like very slow, deep breaths, and just kind of move my mind somewhere else, I was able to get past those things within 30 seconds. Um, but at the time, like I said, I was pregnant. So even if they did give me medicine, I couldn't because you can't take it, you know, certain medications while you're pregnant. But my doctor felt, you know, I didn't need it. And he was really big on um, holistic um, paths first anyway, which is very rare. Um, but I remember deep and being a deep thought and praying and asking God, like, God, help me. Like, why am I having these panic attacks? They don't just come out of nowhere, God what is really deep with inside of me, you know, because my, my heart will flutter so much. Like it will flutter very fast. Like I can literally hear my heart beating, like as if I had my ear on my heart. Um, and I, I didn't just, I just didn't like how I felt. I felt like I was drowning. Like my, it felt almost as if I was suffocating, like trying to gasp for air. And it was just a very uncomfortable feeling. And so one night in prayer, actually, this was after I had my daughter. This was years later. I had my daughter. Um, so panic attacks would come and go. But because I was equipped with the tools that my doctor gave me, what I was already doing with the deep breathing, the staying calm, um, he also uh, kind of suggested that I remove myself, you know, make myself unavailable, you know, until I was until I was able to face these things or be around um, the people or the situations. And he also gave me, you know, tips as far as like counting backwards. Um, that really helped, um, in a lot of ways, but, um, I had to be honest with myself. I had to be honest with where I was. And in that moment, God reminded me of a, uh, of a period of my childhood where both of these people were around me. Both of these people where um, they were very active in my life around that time. But I remembered, uh, I had like kind of, I buried this memory, like I buried it. But it, God had reminded me when I was younger, when I would walk home from school, there were like a ton of, uh, there's a block of young men. And it was like a ton of boys that lived in these houses. And it would just terrify me because of the trauma that I've dealt with in my life. And I was just like, I would be terrified to have to walk past these people, these men and young boys, because I didn't know what they were going to do to me. Like thoughts of anxiety began to kick in. And I remember um, only time I would walk past them is if I was walking with my other friends. But if I was by myself, I would literally go out the way blocks. And I mean blocks. If I saw any boy outside, I would walk all the way around, like all the way out the way, almost a half a mile just so I can get home because I was so afraid to walk past these homes. And so I remember uh, God reminded me of those times when I would walk home, I would be having panic attacks, but I didn't know how to explain those things as a child. And because I was having those panic attacks, it led to asthma attacks. So I just kept thinking that I was having asthma attacks. Around this time of year, I would just keep having asthma attacks. But in actuality, they were panic attacks that led to asthma 
And so that really, it, it kind of brought things home for me and also reminded me that this thing was spiritual. And the reason why I titled this particular um, uh, testimony Hidden the Text was because many of, many of us, like myself, experience things. And if you've ever had a panic attack or some kind of traumatic thing that happened to you in your life, a lot of times we can we uh, will suppress those feelings or we will try to um, tidy up like we'll try to clean up something or completely shut down or try to suppress those those thoughts and those memories until it's like completely out of our memory banks or just avoidance period avoidance the conversation avoidance talking about it avoiding you know um, facing our truth right and so uh, God reminded me that that thing, those avoidances and all of the things that stem from the panic, he reminded me that it was deeply rooted in fear, fear. And because of it, you know, it caused me to have, um, excuse me, I'm so sorry, God. It, it, it caused me, excuse me, to um, experience those panic attacks that were very unhealthy and not only were they unhealthy but they began to attack other parts of my body see when you have suppressed emotions and thoughts and feelings we don't understand that it's connected like our body is connected our body is made of what flesh soul and spirit right and they say our soul pretty much you know controls our mind body and spirit whatever that's what they say but in the end of the day, it's all connected and we're connected to the Father. And that is one thing that has helped me on this journey uh, with even being able to share my testimony. Um, because when I would try to tell somebody that I was feeling a certain way or I was thinking things or, you know, like I was paranoid. I was literally paranoid because I allowed fear to take over, you know, and especially in the black community. Uh, my family and people around me were really big on, you know, you don't go get help. You don't go talk to a therapist. Don't tell your doctor the truth because we don't want them saying that, you know, you have this or you're dealing with that or give you medications. And at the end of the day, many of us need medications. Some of us just need to have a therapist, somebody we can talk to. And for the another majority of us we just need deliverance you know sometimes these things are not always just is what it is some a lot of times these things are spiritual and so um for me it, it kind of opened up that door for me to um, go to a place in my in my mind and in life you know to really evaluate like how many years of, of this lying to myself um, is going to continue because at the end of the day, I knew I needed help. I knew I needed to talk to somebody. And I'm glad that my doctor was there for me to talk to and to guide me and for me to have tools and understand that you don't always have to be on medication and that you don't have to come into agreement with this thing. And so I learned um, to be more intentional about my prayers about being more intentional about why things are a lot like why am I allowing things to get me in a certain place in a certain mindset um, and so I began to be intentional about my war I began to war on purpose so when these hidden attacks were coming when people will say you know um, you know people would automatically think like you don't look like you know you have panic attacks or you seem like everything's okay one of the biggest things from my research online was that a lot of people that have hidden attacks, they're hidden behind people's smiles. A lot of people can look at you and smile and be experiencing a panic attack or an anxiety attack and you would never know. There's not um, a certain look from those hidden subtle things, those hidden subtle attacks, right? I'm going to read something real quick. This book um, I have, it's called The Body Keeps the Score. It's an amazing book. It's I mean, I absolutely love it. Um, I'm going to read a couple of things. It said, this is what brought light um, to a few things with me. It says, the more people try to push away 
and ignore in internal warning signs, the more likely they are to take over and leave them bewildered, confused, and ashamed. So if any of you guys have ever felt that way, then that means we need to reflect and maybe journal down why um, you're pushing those uh, those attacks, those warning signs. Why are you pushing those things away and ignoring it? Um, because when you dealing with confusion and bewilderedness and the shame and shame, these things are not of God, right? So we know that this is attack from the enemy and how the word tells us that the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. And in my heart, I truly believe that he comes to kill our faith and kill our hope, you know, that he comes to destroy our lives, to destroy our minds, you know, and to, um, he comes to just steal our, our joy. Amen. And so if we allow this to happen, then it's like we're just handing our lives over to the enemy and just giving up and just saying, God, listen, this is too much. I can't handle this. And I'm just going to give it over to the enemy. And that's not what God wants for us. He wants us to be able to open our mouths and speak and, um, and get the help that we need. Right. And so, um, I feel wholeheartedly that we should, you know, Make sure that we are not just talking to random people, but that we're talking to somebody that can truly help us and direct us to where we need to go and match that with scripture, match that with the word and stand on it and allow God to do what he has to do. Um, and so for me, I remember uh, God's word. It tells us to cast all of our anxiety on him because he cares for you. That really comforted me and his word it says it says do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and uh, petition with thanksgiving uh, present present your request to God and so God wants to commune with you he wants you to present those requests to him and that's what I had to do I had to fight not just for myself but for my children Amen. And so I wanted to share one other thing that gave me confirmation from what God had revealed to me um, that when I had told you guys that my panic was deeply rooted in fear. So I had to come against that fear in my life. Right. And so the book, it says that we not we now know that panic symptoms symptoms are maintained largely because the individual develops a fear of the boldly sensations associated with panic attacks. And so it says the attack may be triggered by something he or she knows is irrational, but fear of the sensations keeps them escalating into a full body emergency. And so he uh, goes on to explain about how um, he had many of his patients respond to stress by not noticing and naming it but by developing migraine headaches and or asthma attacks so when i read that i said oh my god god literally gave me the answer like listen this is what happened you were deeply rooted in fear and that fear allowed you to have a panic attack and that panic led to the asthma attack and when i read this i said oh my goodness okay so what i'm saying is that's god and then this is science and those two just gave me the confirmation that I had needed for me to know that this thing is real and this thing is spiritual and I can move forward forward in this and from this and so um I, it, I had to understand that God does not want us to suffer he just doesn't and I had to understand that it takes time and I had to also understand that everybody's journey and is different not all people are in a place where they can face these things or handle these things and um, it can just be fixed within 30 seconds. I know some people may need that extra therapy. Some people may need that extra um, push with some medicine for right now to get them, you know, back on uh, a, a normal path for them, a normal for their lives, right? But from my testimony and my story, God has allowed me to see that thing he allowed me to be able to go before him so that he can call a thing out so that i understand now that i need to be more in tune with my body and be okay with saying no be okay with understanding that i may not be able to talk to someone or deal with certain people for a season simply because i need to take care 
of my health, right? Um, and so that's my testimony. And I just wanted to really share it with you guys because I feel that um, so many of us um, go with our stories unheard. And that's one thing I do love about um, Jarkeisha is that she's always encouraging people and the connection, even with that, with my brand, with the Warrior Women in Christ brand, is just the, the encouraging with the, the sisterhood and, and creating a movement of people that will use their voice, that will use their testimony to truly represent the word that's in Revelation. And that is that, you know, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. And so through our testimonies, we are able to give pieces of insight on how God has helped us, how we have tools that has helped us that can help somebody else. That yes, we went through these things. Yes, it's unfortunate. Yes, you know, nobody wants to live a life where they have to experience, you know, traumas or anything like that in any type of way. Um, because this is a trauma. This is a traumatic thing to deal with anxiety, to deal with bipolarism, to deal with schizophrenia, to deal with panic attacks, to deal with anything that's connected to our bodies doing something outside of the way it was created. It can be a traumatic moment for any of us. And so when we deal with that, when we face that and we come to that um, conclusion, then we're able to all come together to help one another. Um, and that is what sisterhood is about. That's what, you know, this conference is about sisterhood, where sisters can come together in a safe place to talk, to get help, to get resources, to learn tools, you know, so that they can advance in their, in their everyday lives. Because uh, many of us are mothers. Many of us are business owners. Many of us are our students. Many of us you know, have a role that is very important and without our 100%, without our full function, that we're not able to operate the way that we need to. And that will cause lack in our normal lives and our out, you know, our, you know, everything else that we do outside of that within our homes. Um, and we have to be mindful that we're not being toxic to ourselves. You know, we talk about toxic people, but we can't be toxic to our own selves. So, I'm not going to continue talking. I feel like I've talked enough. Um, I do share more about full details and different things in my book that's coming out. Um, it's called uh, Healing Past Wounds. I'm so excited. You guys kind of, you know, keep a lookout for that. But I also have um, these. I printed them off because I wanted to make sure they were pretty for you guys. I have 30 scriptures to help war against hidden attacks. Because, like I said, the migraines, the um, the avoidances, and all of the different things that we talked about, those are hitting attacks. Even when our chest, we feel like, oh my goodness, maybe this is just, you know, um, gas. You know, many of us, oh, that's acid reflux. A lot of times, that's kind of warning you something. Um, it's not always acid <laughs> reflux. Um because that's when my chest will start tightening it up in there as well. So just being mindful of those hidden, those subtle attacks that's not always big, blown up to the point where you just can't breathe. But just those moments where you just say, I had to stop. Something just took my breath away for a second. Or, oh, I just, you know, you have a memory and then it makes you jump or you feel a certain way. And you try to hurry up and suppress it, you know, without dealing with it in that moment. These things catch up to us right so i'm just going to share that so just being mindful that we are praying scriptures over ourselves that we are talking to the professionals that we need to talk to that we are getting the resources and connecting with the right people um for those that have the vip package i took my beautiful journal that i created i am his chosen and i have um, created a pdf version for you so that you can print out the pages as you want um, create it. I would love to see your photos if you do print them out. I want to see how you use them um, because I feel like it's so important that we journal, that we get out, you know, a lot of these things that are suppressed deep inside of us. Um, and you guys, I know Jarkeisha is going to give out that information, but also you guys can follow me at Warrior Women in Christ. So it's warriorwomenic.com. Um, and you, it's the same thing on Instagram. I'm always on Instagram. Um, I'm on Facebook, but really on my personal page. 
So um, if you guys really want to connect, like I said, Instagram and my website would be great. And I pray that my testimony helps somebody. I pray that you guys get something out of tonight. I pray that you guys don't leave continuing to suffer in silence, continuing um, to allow those hidden attacks sneak up on you. And I pray that you guys continue to decree and declare life over yourselves, that you understand that um, anxiety, that panic attack, that whatever you're dealing with is not you. It does not define you, that, um, that you guys remember that it's okay to have and set healthy boundaries, that it's okay to say no. And most importantly, it's okay to forgive and forgive yourself and to love yourself. And so I just wanted to share that and I love you guys. And if you have any questions, I, you know, would love to hear them and answer them in whatever capacity that I can. Okay. All right. Bye.